welcome everyone. Today I'm going to talk about gaps and I'm going to talk about momentum. And I have a whole presentation that I prepared today of slides, which I was going to talk about and I still can talk about, but I thought maybe it would be better today to talk about current market conditions, a few charts that I've been looking at, and to ask and to have people ask questions and answer questions from people instead of going through the PowerPoint slide. While I certainly can do that, I thought maybe we'd do something off the cuff today just because of the sell-off today in the market. Um, for those of you that don't know what I do, I teach a class on gaps and I teach people how to trade gaps in a class once a month. The class itself is $6,999 and I do specials now and again to help people to to trade basically so i'm doing a special for chinese new year that i'm launching uh the day after valentine's day valentine's day is tomorrow for those of you that are interested so if you're interested in learning more about the upcoming special the class for february the dates are february 24th and 25th then email me at melissa at the stockswish.com in fact let me put my email in the room and I will send you the details on the special and I will write the class dates in here. And, and I can put, put up the pop-up at the end, but those are the class dates. But I had the slide in the presentation I was doing today and then I thought, well, with this, with this market today, maybe it'd be better if, we, if I just talk, talk about the gap today in the market and some other gaps too. Before I start doing that though, does anyone have any questions? Some of you I recognize, some of you I do not recognize. Um, does anyone have any questions for me if you have been following me for a while? And does anyone have any questions for me if you're new? Before I just start talking. start talking does anyone have any questions they want to ask me hello hello or I can start singing <laughs> the spy no questions okay we got one answer there from Michael Jeff no questions either all right very good let me just download this spy here is this easy to learn? There we go. There's a question. Yay! We got one question from the peanut gallery. Is this easy to learn? Well, it's interesting because I get that question actually not as often as you would think. There's more people probably to come and learn from me that have traded in the past than there is that have never traded. And it's a catch-22. So you might think, well, I've traded in the past, therefore, you know, I'm going to learn this so easily. And then you have people that have never traded in their life and they're worried that they're going to get it. It's not necessarily like that. So you could have absolutely no experience whatsoever at all and learn it just as quickly as someone that has experience. Why? Someone that's brand new doesn't have any bad habits, and that's the benefit of being brand new. There are many traders that are trading for a very long time, longer than I'm even alive, that have terrible habits, bad habits, and actually we can talk about one of those things today, because um, it came up today in a question in the room. But whether you're doing this for a long time, meaning trading, or whether you've never traded in your life, it doesn't necessarily equate to easy peasy learning it. As far as is it easy to learn, I think I do a good job explaining things. I do as good of a job as I can. And again, if you ask me questions, I will answer them for you and I am here to help you learn it. I think that, you know, from doing this, as long as I've been doing it though, sometimes people don't know what questions to ask. And as you start trading, as you're doing it, then you say, oh, wait a minute, let me ask about this. 
and then it's it's a process so i think it is easy to learn but again you know i'm the one that's teaching it and so i do the best job i can explaining it and explaining things but everybody has a different learning curve so some people will pick up the information and learn it faster than others and it really doesn't have anything to do with your experience it has to do with how well you're you're willing to take in the information and most importantly listen to me so if you have a lot of blockages and things in your head that you learn from before that are the opposite or wrong information that may affect your ability to be able to learn if you keep being stuck on that those things that don't work so I say, make yourself a blank slate and come to me and learn what I know and listen to me and follow me. And that's where you're going to have the best chance of success. And then I think it will be easy for you. And you ask questions and you go along. And like I said, when I do specials where I have the trading room included or the options newsletter included, when I do things like that, that's to help you so you can mimic the trades, take the trades, make money while you're learning. As far as going off and doing it on your own right after the class, sure, you can do that. But it may be a process where you're learning it. And that's why the support system of being in the room helps you do it and learn it and make money as you're going along. I don't know. There's some people here that are already students. Danny, I see you here. I don't know. Danny can answer the question, is this easy to learn? Who else is in here? Joanna's in here. Joanna did a class ages ago. So some of you that are in here, you tell me if it's easy to learn. I have some students that are here today listening. That was a good question. Danny said small learning curve, but easy. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, there you go. Small learning curve, but easy. That's what Danny said. Danny did the class, I think, in November. Again, you don't know everything I know about gaps until you come and do the class. So it's like you don't know what questions to ask now in reference to that because you didn't do it yet, you know. So what do I do? I trade gaps and I trade momentum. So let's actually let's take a look at the video because this is a wild one here today. I think this is the wildest chart that we could possibly talk about today. And actually, Joe is asking me about this. The last time I did a lecture, Joe wanted to short this and I said, not on your life. And then he said he didn't, thank God. But let's talk about NVIDIA because this is a good chart to go over momentum. So for those of you that don't know what I do, I get up in the morning and I look at stocks that are gapping. Then I rate gaps using a rating system. It is a system that I designed myself and I created for myself, for nobody else but me. And then eventually I realized I had a voice and I liked talking on TV and then I realized I had a skill to also teach people too, and then I decided to start a business and teach people, and that's how my career, even doing anything with this, evolved. But as far as what I started out, when I started out doing, I wanted to trade, and I wanted to make a lot of money, and I, need, I knew that you needed to have a big move to get a lot of money, and I was like, well, how can I find the big moves? Okay, so I realized that gaps actually had large moves very very large moves again while you could go long and you could go short i do prefer to short okay today was a good day to short even though it was a crazy day it was a good day to short divinia though we're going to talk about which we went long okay we went long this and this is a stock that if you don't have a certain kind of mojo to trade it it can really bite you in the butt and what do I mean I mean you need conviction to trade this because if you don't have conviction with the price of this whether you're day trading it which is very expensive to do a margin or whether you're buying calls in it which are still expensive I mean the stocks over $700 a, a share it's it's gonna be expensive no matter what you do but it's definitely cheaper to do options in this than then day trade this a margin. But anyways, this is a stock that has large moves and you want to do it in a gap. So what did we do with this? Well, we went long, okay? So we had some couple of longs in this we did. So let's go over a gap. What is a gap? A gap is a difference in the close and the open. So Navinia closed here on the 8th, closed at 696.41 and gapped up. This was on Friday 
gapped up, opened at 705.33, rallied, then it gapped up here on Monday, took off like a rocket, and boom. Okay, dream target on this was 750 yesterday. It pretty much got there. It almost got there. This is close enough, and, and it worked. And I had called very, 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 very late calls in this on the day before on Friday, and it had a pop then on Monday, and that was the trade. Now, again, I get this question all the time, specifically with options. Options are not swing trades, okay? And I mentioned this before many, many moons ago, many, many weeks ago at the beginning of the year and even at the end of last year, that I did not think 2024 was going to be an easy year to swing trade. Not that it's ever all, always an easy year, but even though the market's in an uptrend, and even though the market's bullish, and today proved that as well, Things don't go straight up and things don't go straight down. And I for sure don't think that's going to happen this year. So people, when they're swing trading, they're taking positions and they want them to just go nice and easy peasy boom, whether up or down. You're, that's not how we trade, okay? I'm trading momentum. The momentum in NVIDIA was to take the trade, get the move, get in, get out, boom, done. And that is what we did, okay? That's what I do all the time. The fact that this closed yesterday with a taily thing and a red bar has absolutely nothing to do with anything at all. The stock had a rally, gapped up, and pushed up higher and had the move. So again, how do you make money in the market? You have to get the direction right or you're losing. That's number one. You're losing if you're in the wrong direction, period. And you also have to get a move. I call it momentum. I call it a big move. What do I mean by big? I mean, if you're risking $500, you're looking to make $500. If you're risking $1,000, you are looking to make $1,000. Again, if you're doing an option, 50% is fine, 50% is okay too. And some trades we take are way more than 100% or one to one. Some trades we take are much, much bigger than that. How do we know? We happen to be in the trade and it goes in our favor and it goes in our favor overnight in an option. The difference between doing options and swing trades is you have a fixed risk in an option. You can't lose any more than you have at risk in the cost of the trade. That's it. When you're doing a swing trade, you essentially have unlimited risk. You may say, well, I have a stop. It's a mental stop, though. It's not a real stop. It's like an imaginary stop. It's like imaginary. It's not real. Because if something happens where the trade goes against you too fast, too quick, too crazily, you may not have time. You're not watching it. You're doing, you're doing something else. You're not even at your computer. You miss it. It's, you know, after hours. You can't exit the trade. And that happens way more than you think. And so swing trading, you really either need to be a full on cash, in my opinion, or and have a very, very big account. But you're also your time horizon for swing trading has to be massive. So while you can use my system for swing trading, it's not something that we're doing on a regular basis because on a regular basis, we're trying to make money. We're trying to make money today. We're trying to make money tomorrow. We're trying to make money by Friday, by next week. And the only way to do that is to get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. If we take the trade, get in, get out, then we get the move and we get out as the move is going in our favor, which in this case, NVIDIA, again, was a long, but I'm just using, using this as an example here because this had the move in, in 24 to 48 hours from Friday to Monday, boom, okay? Yeah, I just was going to say something, and I forgot what I was going to say. Any other questions here as I keep talking? So, again, someone was asking before, is this easy? Is it easy to learn? Da, 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 da. And I have a lot of people that come to me and they want to know if they can do it and can they do it and, and they want to know if it's going to work and, and, and everything else like this. And of course, I do these webinars. Now, today, this is just for my group. But I do webinars where I go where there's like, you know, 10 people talking in one day and things like that. And different people talk about different things and different people selling their courses and products and things like that. The way I look at it is this. And I'm going to use an example here and tell you a story about myself. So I start, I had an, an idea about nine, ten, about, about 10 years ago, which before I got on TV, to actually have my own television show. I had an idea to do it. And I said, oh, this is, I, I, this would be great. I could do this. I had no idea about anything about TV whatsoever at all. And I wasn't on TV at that time. In my, I think it was 2013, actually. 
could have even been 2012. Anyways, it was it was way before I even got on TV, which was around 2015 into 2016. So anyways, I didn't know how to do anything with it, but I got this idea and I said, I'm really good at what I do. I'm really good at trading. I'm really good at talking about the market and stocks and everything else and figuring out where they go. I, I should have my own TV show about the market. Anyways, to make a long story short, I ended up meeting someone very prominent in the television industry in 2015, okay? That man, okay, is well known by people and pretty much knows everyone in the television industry. And at the time that I first met him, I thought, well, he could help me. He can help me make it happen. You know, he's gonna make it happen for me kind of thing. And, and as I've evolved, as the years have gone on, and then I got on TV, and now I'm on all these channels, and here I am, and I still don't have my own show, and that's a whole other topic, I realized something very, very interesting, which, is, which kind of mimics how people are about trading. So people will attempt to trade the market for months, for weeks, for years, for their whole life. Again, could be 30, 40, 50 years. And they're always wanting to go to someone that's like gonna, you know, make it happen for them you know and everyone wants guarantees and what am i going to get with this and you know whatever it's very similar to my situation with meeting this very prominent man in television with tv that man today could help me i still know this man i'm friends with him but he's not going to make it happen for me if I get 50% of the way or more than 50% to the point of being able to get my own TV show at the stock market, he can help, he can and he would, I know that he would help push me to the rest. Like he would help me then to get to the next point. He would help me and assist me if I can get 50% there or more, which I'm not even, I'm not even 50% at that point. Again, television is very difficult to break into to have your own show. Probably more difficult than even trading the market. Trading is very similar. You got to come to me. You got to learn the information and I can assist you, but you have to make it happen. So I can assist you and help you in getting there, but I'm not going to make it happen for you. So it's very, very similar. You have to believe in yourself that you can do it. You have to want to do it. You have to come to me, learn the information in the class, ask questions if you have any, like we were just talking about, pay for the class up front, not knowing the information, not knowing anything at all, what you're even going to learn from me. Do it, like Danny was saying, it's a process. And then you follow me, you're there, you're there every day. And I'm calling the trades in the room and I'm calling the options newsletters and I'm teaching you and I'm assisting you. You're over the 50%. So by the time after you do the class, you're over the 50% with me and I help you get the last leg up. And it's very much like this man with TV, except for I'm not, I'm not at the 50% mark with him. But again, I was very naive when I first met this man in 2015 thinking, oh, he's going to make it happen for me. He can do it. He knows everybody. He knows everything. He's fabulous. He's all the way up here. But I was wrong because he's not going to help me make it happen. He can't, you know, he's not going to help me get to the 50%. If I get to the 50% or more, he can assist me with the rest, but he's not going to help me make it happen. All of it. Does that make any Ooh. sense? Like I'm not pressing the buttons for you. There's no guarantees. I'm not sitting at your computer sizing your trades, pressing the button, getting in, getting out, doing everything right. And yes, sometimes people that have done with me and traded with me and taken the class have even made mistakes. We, I had two people make mistakes in the last week, which they copped to. One person that admitted that they're not using stops, which I do, and I teach in the class to do, they're not doing stops, that's wrong. And one guy that took a day trade and held it over the weekend, which is a no-no, and basically converted a day trade into a swing trade that he lost in and he never should have done and I don't teach people to do that. So again, you have to get to the point where you decide that you want to do it, know you want to do it, learn it, are willing to take the risk to sign up for a class like mine, open up a trading account, learn how to press the buttons of the trading account, get to that point and then I push you up over the next point over the 50% 
and help you get the rest of the way up. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? And again, it's very similar to what I realized is, you know, again, my thinking was flawed when I met this man. Like, he's going to make it happen for me. No, no one's going to make it happen for me but me. And no one's going to make it happen for you but you if you want to be successful training. But I can help you. And that's the good thing. And that's why it's good that you know me because I can help you. But you have to do certain things yourself and only you. And many people, and this is just across the board as a generalization, many people that are trading the market won't take responsibility for that fact and continue to just kind of muddle along and lose money month over month and year over year or not lose money but not make money and not really get anywhere because they, they really expect what? Someone to do it for them? No, that's ridiculous. If you want someone to invest your money for you, that's not what this is. You go to someone, you're going to pay them 30% or they'll take a commission or whatever it is, they'll, they'll, they'll invest your money. That's a stockbroker, that's something completely different. This is you're actively involved in your own decisions and you're making the decisions yourself. The, where are you getting in the trade? Where are you getting out of the trade? The sizing. Again, I'm the support for you, but you are pressing the buttons. You are doing it. And you also have to get to the point where you decide you want to learn it because learning it helps you. So that was one point I wanted to make. Did I get that point across? It's a good analogy because I was thinking about it because it's, it's very, very, very similar. Anyways, let's talk about gaps some more and momentum here. So as you well know, or as I said earlier, and if you've never heard, I do like to short. I prefer to short, and we shorted the market today. So let's talk about what happened here in this market today. So 212 was yesterday. The market closed at 598. We had negative econ out this morning that the market reacted terribly to. And we gapped down this morning then and we opened at 494.53. We rallied, pinged up here. The high today in the SPY was 495.85 and broke. Dream target today was 490. We almost got there. We bounced pretty much into the close where there were shorts that took profit and we bounced into the close and now this market's trying to push back here tonight. But low today was 490.71. You can see here, let me just blow this up, that the momentum today and the play today was what? It was a short. It was a short and we shorted this and the move was to the downside and you could have made $3, $4, whatever. If you took it at the right place, got the drop, boom. Again, we kind of ran out of day here when this bounced or I think we would have gotten to 490 and continued. But there are people that went long this into the close, which in my opinion was a bad, bad decision. But there are people that did that. But the trade here, the momentum, the move was a short. And that's the trade you would have wanted to do today if you did it. You wouldn't have wanted to go long at no point today, not the end of the day, not the beginning of the day, not in the close, and not overnight. And yet there are people that are long here overnight. And it's not a good trade in my opinion. But again, if you're someone that is looking to actively trade momentum, you would do the trade, you would get in, get out. Or you would do an option and you say, I'm taking this, I think we're lower, and I'm going to hold it. And then you have to hold it. And then you're holding it, waiting to see it play out, whether it's into this Friday option expiration or next week. Again, this market doesn't go straight up, as it doesn't, doesn't go straight down. And that's what people find tricky too. So taking something like a class like mine, where you understand what you're looking for and why and the rationale behind it will help you take a train, hold a train longer, get a bigger move, get a bigger piggy target, get more profit out of it, even if it backs up, even if you're up, then you're down, then you're up, then you're down. And this swung around a lot today. It absolutely did. If you understand what's going on, it will help you to hold a trade. Otherwise, you are killing it at the worst place possible, taking a trade, killing it, flipping it, shorting it, going long, shorting it, going long again, and killing it and chopping yourself up where you're making a little, losing a little, making a little, losing a little, and at the end, you're down. The swing that you want is always in the momentum. Again, in the case of NVIDIA, the swing was up. So you would want it to be long or bought calls. In the case of the SPY, it's a short, or you could have bought puts. And again, the only difference between really doing an option and a day trade, which we did both in this today, is the cost of doing an option is a lot cheaper than doing a margin trade in the SPY right now because it's very expensive. And it's been expensive, actually. Does everyone understand what margin is?
So again, the options we're doing are not swing trades. It's the same thing really as our day trades. We're just taking them out for longer and a different way to do it that we can hold them overnight because I'm not holding my day trades overnight, even though I told you somebody did and that was a no-no, that was a boo-boo. I bet that person knew they made a boo-boo, okay? If you're in a trade and I call a trade and the stop doesn't hit and it's getting close to the end of the day, whether you're up a little, down a little, whatever, flat, you, have, you gotta kill it. I mean, I have to kill it. Don't hold the trade overnight because you're like, well, this didn't go yet, or well, I'm down in it, I still could go. No, you just kill it. If it doesn't stop, you just have to kill it. You have to kill it before four, get out. You're not just gonna hold it. It will convert into two to one margin or cash or however you have the account set up, but don't hold it. Anyways, today was a good example of a short in the market, and it was an example of what? Selling. So what happened today, basically, again, last night the market closed at one price and it opened today at a different price. So what happened? Selling. And that's what happened. Selling happened in the market. And then we shorted it and it fell. Now, it may not have fell as fast as I wanted it to, which it did not. But that is how, if I was on TV right now, I would describe what happened in the market. And again, why we fell, this thing, that thing, the other, it's neither here nor there. I can tell you my reasons what I think, but it really doesn't matter to you. What we're doing is reading the price, and we're trying to predict what the stock or the market, this is an ETF of this S&P, the SPY, we're trying to predict where it's going to go. That's what we want to do. We're like, well, where is this going to go if it's gapping? That's what we're trying to do. And how do I do that? I do that with a rating system, which I use in the pre-market. And I go through and I go, check, check, check. And if I get a total a total amount that says, oh, this looks like it's going to total up and tally up good over 20 points for the 26 point system that I say, well, that's going to go in my favor. The other thing we're talking about experience and learning and trading and all these things is that, again, as the years go on and the more people I talk to about my class and the more webinars I do and the more strangers that I come in contact with, whether it's on the phone or email or whatever, and events like this, I, I find it shocking almost, to be honest with you, how many people trade the market and risk their own money and don't know what they're doing. It's people have the lure and of the market. They want to make money. They believe that they can, but and you can, but you won't unless you know what to do. So that's the caveat. If you don't know what to do, you're going to lose. And a lot of people don't know what to do and they trade. People really don't know what to do. And that is why people lose. And we just saw a big invisible tick in the spy. Let me just look at this number here. 586. There we go, we just had an invisible tick. Any questions about what I just said right now? Now, MGM was supposed to be out tonight. Let's take a look at this. This will be a live gap if this is actually doing anything. Let's look. This would be something, if this is moving, I will rate tomorrow as a long or short if it's moving. Let's see. Oh, this is down. Here we go. So this is a gap. We're watching it right now. You see where the price of this is. It's MGM. Boom. This is trading right now at 43, 43.64. Again, I don't trade the after hours, but it's gapping down. How do I know? Because the stock closed today at 45.66. There it is. It's not trading at 45.66 anymore. It's trading at 43 and change. You see it? So if I get up tomorrow morning, I will rate this gap. It may be at this price. It may be at a slightly different price. So I usually wait to the pre-market in the morning, and then I'll rate it, and then I'll determine if I want to possibly short this tomorrow. I'm not going to go long. Why? It's a bearish gap. So if I rate the gap and it doesn't rate over 20 points, and it's a bearish gap, and I say, well, it doesn't rate good, well, then I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to flip it and go long. Same thing with a bullish gap. If I rate it and it doesn't rate good, well, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to short it and do the reverse. Somebody asked about NVIDIA this morning because NVIDIA was down. NVIDIA was down with the market. I said, well, what about doing NVIDIA? What about doing a put in NVIDIA? What about shorting it? I said, no, no. I did not want to short NVIDIA. I did not want to do a put in this. I didn't like this bearish gap in NVIDIA. Yes, we did the SPY today, and we did a couple other things too. But we didn't short this, and we didn't do any puts in this, and we didn't do this, and we let this be. We didn't go long this. Why? That would have made no sense. But we also didn't short it because it wasn't a good gap. 
It didn't rank good enough to short. But you can't go long this year. I don't even care that it rallied today. The long trade was the day I called the trade and the move that it made up and the push up near the 750 target. You wouldn't go long here today. And this is another bad habit that many, many traders have. What do I mean? Again, this is like a mindset that comes from something and I really don't know what. I never had this background, luckily, so it never really hurt me as far as trading. The mindset of buying pullbacks or buying low and selling high and, and all that stuff, that is something that people teach and people do and it just doesn't work. It's not about the fact that sometimes it might work or sometimes it may not work or anything like that. It has to do with the fact that when you are looking at something, if you're trading momentum, you want to go with the momentum. You don't want to go against it. Does that make sense? There's a helicopter right above me. <laughs> Any questions about anything I just said? Kind of just talking here now because there's a lot to talk about today. Hello, is anyone there? Are they watching for the helicopter? No, but the other week, was it last week? They were, they were the lowest, lowest, lowest and closest I ever saw a helicopter in front of a building in my life. It was insane. I did get a picture of it, but it was kind of blurry. It was when we were trading. I could have waved to the guy and he would have seen me. And there's other times too where they're definitely close, but that was crazy. The president was here last week. And that's why they were here. And they were here in front of my in front of my face the entire day that the president was here. But in the morning he was so low, it was I could have waved to the guy. I actually saw the hawk fly under the helicopter that day. That was insane. And I couldn't I couldn't get my camera up fast enough to get the to get the hawk and the helicopter in the shot. <laughs> but I mean but they are actually, sometimes I see the hawk above the helicopter, but he went below it. Uh, Kumar, how are you doing today? So one of the things, again, since we're just having a general discussion about trading and things like that now is that, again, if you, if you ever take a trade, you take a trade and it, and it, and it doesn't go right away. So you take a trade, you're down. You're down like as soon as you take it. You're like, oh crap, I hate this thing. It's not going to work. And you kill it. And you take a loss. Then it goes on to work. You say, oh, and you hate yourself for killing it. You said, damn it, I knew it was going to work. And then you don't get it. So you took a loss in something that goes on to work. And then you hate yourself too. You see the psychological anxiety that many traders go through. When you take a trade, if you have yourself sized correctly, which again is up to you, you're responsible for that. You don't oversize yourself. Don't undersize yourself, but don't oversize yourself. You take the trade, you give the trade a chance to play out. And you don't worry about it. And you don't have to kill it if it doesn't go right away. So again, if you understand what's going on, you won't. If you understand what's going on and you feel the need of the desire and the anxiety to kill it right away, if it's down, then you have too much risk on. And that is my two cents on that, which again, some people do. You're too worried about the trade because of the risk is too big. Okay. Kumar's doing good. He's waiting for the trades to play out. He's in, he's on the options letter. Okay, that's fine. What if you take a trade and you're up? The trade's going, it's going, it's going. You're up in the trade. You're up. All of a sudden now, you don't even think about anything. Because you're like, well, I'm up. It's going to be up forever and ever and ever and ever. It's going to be up. And you never, and you don't even think about it. You just assume it's just going to keep going. Well, that's a problem too. Your job is not to take the trade and stay in it to the end of your life or even the end of the option expiration or even the end of the day if you take a day trade. No, 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 no. Your job is to trade the momentum. And when the momentum comes in, you get the move, you get out. 
you get the move, you get out. So again, I'm playing out this scenario again. So people take the train and it's going and they're up and they're like, la, 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 la. I don't have to worry about this one. It's up. And then all of a sudden they're up a lot. They're like, la, 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 la. And then all of a sudden they're not up. The trade starts to go against them. They're still up. They're just not up as much as they were. And then they panic. They say, well, now I got to hold it. Now I got to hold it all the way back. I got to get it back. I got to get it back to where it was. I got to get it back to the high of the options channel. I just got to get it back. I just got to get it back up there. Or they double down and they add to the trade or they just say, uh, and maybe the trade's over. And they missed it and they missed the rings and the train's over. Or they add to a train and, and they take more, but the trade's over. And they don't get out and then they let a good trade completely go against them, which is nuts too. Again, I'm playing out all these different scenarios of the anxieties and things in people's head that they go through because this is the mindset of people that are doing this and not really understanding the crux of what we do, which is what? Trade momentum, make money. You take it, get the move, get out. You take it, get the move, get out. You could just, I can write a song. Take it, get the move, get out. Take it, get the move, get out. This is not long-term trading, Warren Buffett, swing trading. You don't have $10 million in account where you're taking different positions in this thing, that thing, and you're holding it until 2025. That's not what this is. That's what, not what active trading is. And again, the complacency I've seen, you know, tends to be with people that are up and then the anxiety is with trades that are down. So they micromanage trades that are down, which there's no need to micromanage. If a trade is down, what are you going to do? If it's down, you just, it's down. You can't make it go up. Just let it play out. If your risk is normal, just let the trade play out. Give it a chance. And when you're up, I find people that are not focused enough on what's going on in it and then they just let all the profit just go away because they think it's going to last forever. You know what I mean? Um, There's something else I was going to say. Tesla, let's look at. Any questions here while I'm loading up this Tesla? And again, I'm just talking here today about different things. This is taking a while here to load this data. Any questions while I'm loading this Tesla up? New people, old people, anybody here? This is taking forever. I don't know why. There we go. Well, I'm not trading in the pre-market, John. So the stock opens and the market opens or anything we're doing, whatever, at 9.30 Eastern time. I'm never entering any trade at 9.30 and I'm never entering any trade before 9.30. So we're trading between 9.30 and 10, okay? But I'm really not entering anything right at the open, no. But I'm watching what's happening and waiting for a setup between 9.30 and 10. So that is aggressive. Um, and again, I do all the pre-market work so I know what I want to do with whatever I'm doing. We did the Tesla today. This 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 should have continued down. This bounce at the end of the day again with the market. But this is another one. This is another one that has been very, very tricky the last couple of days. I'd say the last two weeks, really. And again, people are taking this, buying it, losing, flipping it, shorting it, losing. There's traders doing all kinds of stuff in this. They're buying this for a gap field. They're buying the support. Then it doesn't work. Then they quick short it. Then that doesn't work. Then they're buying it again. You see? This hasn't been easy, this Tesla, whatsoever at all. It was easy the day that we did it and the week that we did it of the earnings, which was back here. 
it was an easy peasy poof but as far as ever since then this has been not easy to do but you can't go long and short this same stock you can't do that the same day you can't do that the same week you can't you can't say well i have 100 percent conviction this is lower and i have 100 percent conviction it's higher that's like saying i'm in love with you and i hate you at the same time <laughs> that's you can't you that's wrong that's impossible okay I was just gonna say something and I forget. So again, for, for traders, the key, if you if you're if if you want to trade and you're not making money, then you need a class like mine. If you don't know if you want to trade, you really have no idea if you want to do this at all, well then that's not a decision I can help you with. That's something that you have to decide. Do you want to do this? Is this something that you want to do? You can ask me questions. I can tell you what I think of it. It's something I chose for a career, but it, maybe it's not for you, or maybe it is. But whether you want to trade or not is your decision. That's not a decision I can make for you. If you're trading and you're already making money and you're doing well, you don't need me. Add size to your trades, you can make more money, okay? But if you're trading and you know you want to do it, and this is really a dream and you know you want to do it, and it's something you want to do, and you're losing or you're not making enough money, and you're basically losing, break even, whatever, then you need a system like mine, you need to take my class to learn it, and you need the support. But again, we were talking before about the getting to the 50% mark. Getting to the 50% mark seems to be the hardest, 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 hardest thing for people to do. Somewhere along the line, there's some kind of entitlement I think that traders tend to get, and it's the, it's, it's the, and either it's the industry itself, because there's some people out there that are teaching stuff that doesn't work, but that's true of anything. But again, it's, it's, there's some kind of mindset that people feel like, well, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I've been losing, I deserve to win. No, you don't deserve to win. You don't deserve anything. You deserve to win when you're willing to put in the work, time, energy, and money, and take the risk to do it. No one's going to hand you anything in a silver platter. And again, I'm going to use TV as an example. The fact that I've been on TV, have the experience, know a lot of people, been doing this for almost 10 years, that doesn't mean I deserve anything. Okay? It has to do with, am I ready to take it to the next step? Am I ready to take the risk to go to the next step? Am I ready to put in the work to get to the next step to make the next thing happen? whatever that is, you know. And that is, again, one, one reason why not everybody will be successful trading because they won't be willing to go to the next step. They will have had their fill and they will stay stuck in the point where they feel like it's owed to them. Like the market owes them something that they should be making money by now because they've been doing this for 20 years and failing and losing. The market doesn't owe you or anyone anything, including me. I got to get it right every day. There's no guarantees. It's not set in stone. I must get up every day and rate my gaps. If I don't, then I, I don't know if it rates good to do it. Then I'm trading on the fly, and that's not a good idea. I have to size my trades. I have to think about my risk. I have to think about what I'm doing. I have to think about trades when I'm up. Should I get out? Should I hold it? NVIDIA, I got out of. Now, if I hadn't got out of NVIDIA yesterday, we did talk about this today a little bit in the room. Um... I would have been down this morning, actually. Um, but again, anybody that didn't get out of this trade yesterday, 750 was a dream target. Again, it got super duper close. It hit through other targets. There was no reason to hold it through the number or anywhere past or to get out. But again, if you if you were still in the trade today, and you were down in it, the trade did recover as it turns out because this did rally back today, even though I, I would never have gone long here today. I didn't call any new trades in this here today. I don't confuse this. But anyways, if you killed it and took the loss, that was the wrong thing to do as well because it did, it did come back. You know, again, if you believed 100% this was going to 800 and you said, come hell or high water, I'm holding Melissa's calls. I don't give a crap about 750, 740, 730. This is going to 800 and I don't give a crap. 
then you just then you are holding it through. You held it through yesterday. You held it through today. You're still in the trade even now. Again, I'm not, but I'm just giving an example and why it's so important to understand what you're doing and then to have your profit targets out ahead of time. But it's interesting because NVIDIA has become the new Apple. NVIDIA is actually like the new Apple. NVIDIA is the reason the market rallied at all this morning and Apple didn't. So NVIDIA is like the new Apple. NVIDIA is moving the market. It's pretty crazy, actually. You got out of today? Kumar of NVIDIA. Oh, yesterday. Okay, yeah, it ran up yesterday. Well, that was fine. Good. Uh, there's something else I was going to say. I forget. I just lost my train of thought. Sometimes it's good to do lectures like this without without a PowerPoint. I mean, it's good to, it's good to talk when I have trades that I want to go over or things in the PowerPoint, but sometimes it's good to do talks like this on the fly. If you're not willing to get serious about trading, though, you're not going to get anywhere with it. That I can tell you. There's a lot of people who trade the market that aren't serious about it, and that's why 99.99999% of them lose year over year. They may not lose every day, but they lose over the course of every week and every month and every year. Some people lose more than others because their sizing is different and how they kill trades when they're up or down is different. But to do something every day and waste months and weeks and years of your life and not make money and not get anywhere with it is such a waste of your time. It's just such a waste of your time and such a waste of your life. The purpose of doing this is to make money. You, you may not want to do this. And that is not a choice that I can make for you. That is your choice. But if you want to do it and you don't have a strategy that's successful or consistent and has more wins than lo losses, then you need my class. Whether or not you want to trade, though, is not a decision I can make for you. But if you're losing, you need a system. And what you're doing isn't working. And again, talking about buying dips and buying support and buying pullbacks and things like that. People that are doing that for years and years and years will keep doing it. Even if they're losing, they will do it because they might do 10 trades and two may work and eight may lose, but they still think it works because the two that they did work. But it doesn't work consistently. You were mentally challenged for many months until last year, Kumar. Yeah, Kumar, I think you're over the hump. You've been on the options newsletter and you're doing well, but I think you need the class. You have not done the class. I don't think you did the class. No, I don't think you did. I think you need the class. I think the class support, learning it would do well. Some people do well trading on the options newsletter and they don't have, they don't ever do the class. That's true, but I think that the class would help you. I don't think you did the class. Any other questions? So again, it's an interesting market. If you said to me, Melissa, where, where are we going to be tomorrow? Well, we have some data out tomorrow, but really we have oil numbers out at 1030. We don't have anything significant in the pre-market like we did today. I do think you need to take the class, Kumar. I think that's something that you need to do. The class pulls all the pieces of the puzzle together and pulls it all together for you in, in a way that I think helps you understand what to do. And that's the whole point of it. Learning helps you. It's like if someone said to you, well, this, t explain to me why I have to eat this food and why is this food healthy for me and going to help me stay young and healthy and beautiful well, maybe you'd do it if you understood why. Same thing with trading. Anyways, I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever at all, even though we're gapping up tonight now, the market's lifting, we're actually gapping up tonight now after the sell-off today. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever at all if we gapped up. Here's, here's every scenario that could happen tomorrow, and I'll lay it out for you. This is the last thing I'll say. And if you have any last-minute questions here, ask me now. We can gap up tomorrow, fail, sell off like a hot cake not go higher we could gap down tomorrow 
in which case pretty much wherever we gap down we're going to sell off so i would love that to happen actually we can have a big gap down tomorrow that comes out of nowhere totally unexpected nobody even believes it why because we're up tonight why nvidia is up nvidia is up tonight in the after hours that's the only reason this market's up and the bounce into the close but if we're down tomorrow we could even be down big that would be totally unexpected i would love that to happen who knows we could be up tomorrow in the gap neutral neutral slash bullish up rally rally for a day tomorrow's wednesday rally for a day close green rally wednesday close green not go anywhere but rally go nowhere and then fall thursday thursday so that's every possible scenario that could set up tomorrow which of course i don't know how we open tomorrow and i don't know how we gap and i'm just laying every scenario out of how we could be any questions here from anyone about anything i just said if you're interested in the class or the special email me at melissaatthestockswish.com i think this is a good lecture day it was a good discussion today and some of you asked questions i've seen some of you before i know some of you were thinking about doing the class well it's up to you if you want to trade or not today was tricky we've had a great start to the year though it's been good trading the opportunities have been there and we've been taking them and we've been acting we've been taking the trades today was tricky though it was really 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 a long day i don't normally hold trades into the close or even into two or three o'clock today was a long day to get the move that i wanted in the shorts i was in but it paid off but it was a long day and i'm pooped Again, conviction helped today. You're screwed without it, but the knowledge gives you the conviction. Otherwise, where's the conviction coming from? Where, where are you getting the conviction at all? If you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the conviction. So if you don't have the conviction, then how can you stay with trades? How can you make money? How can you do anything? Because nothing goes straight up and nothing goes straight down, not even NVIDIA, not even NVIDIA, not even BA, not even Tesla. So nothing goes straight up and nothing goes straight down. So you've got to have conviction. And where do you get it? The knowledge gives you the conviction, understanding why we're doing this, why I think it's going to work. And again, I laid that out in the room this morning when we were talking about stuff for the people that were there. And we'll talk about that more, I think, tomorrow. Listen, here's my email to anyone that has questions or if you're interested in the class. Again, you have to decide if you want to trade. That's not a decision I can make for you. I can answer questions for you. Joe, hopefully you will join soon. Kumar, I think you need to do the big class. John, I think you've been following me for a while. I don't know where you're at. Mark, I recognize your name, but I don't remember from what. My, there's Michael, I recognize you. It's Joe. It's Thomas Joe. I thought you were a different Joe. I thought you were the Joe that shorted Nvidia. It's a different Joe. There's another Joe. There's another Joe that I see your last name there now. I didn't see your last name before. There's another Joe that was shorting NVIDIA that was at the last lecture. Well, that wasn't you. Anyways, Joe B. Are you in any trains or did you get out into the close? If you have any questions, email me. It's good to see some of you. All right, and some of you I will see bright and early tomorrow morning. Be on time, 9 a.m. 
Well, we're going to watch MGM, so we'll see. All right, Kumar, I'll talk to you soon. You're welcome.